Hi, everybody. You're very welcome to this evening's uh, Engineering National Development Series. Uh, this evening's uh, theme is on sustainable mobility, enhancing the economy, environment and safety. Uh, just to give you a quick overview of this evening's event, uh, this webinar series was organized by Engineers Ireland West Region Committee and is designed to provide insights into sustainable mobility developments. Whilst the presentations and case studies covered will be drawn from County Mayo, the issues and topics presented link to national and EU policy, and the learning from presentations will be applicable across the country. The topics covered will include rural transport, active travel planning and implementation, connecting Ireland, the national policy to improve mobility in rural areas, energy transitions, and SEAI Sustainable Energy Community Communities Programme. Uh, if you have any questions, I would invite you to submit them in the Q&A box at the bottom, and we will cover them at the end of the four presentations. Uh, just to introduce the first of four speakers is uh, Tom Gilligan. Tom was the head of finance with the newly created Limerick City and County Council, which was the biggest change management program in local government history. He's the current director of services at Mayo County Council with responsibility for housing, roads, architectural services, services development, procurement, efficiency, and the Ballina Municipal District. Tom is the holder of an MBA in local government and is the instigator and founder of vacanthomes.ie, an initiative of Mayo County Council on behalf of the local government sector. Hand it over to you, Tom. Okay, thanks, John. And hi, everyone. Delighted to be here this, uh, this evening to present to you and thanks so much to Engineers Ireland West Committee for the opportunity. So if you have, if you all see my screen there, I'm just gonna just gonna kick off in relation to, to uh, my presentation. So I suppose just first of all, in relation to the aspect as regards the one of the key things as well as the world population and the source here is also from the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, where the population for 20 uh, 2011 is 7 billion and as you can see a massive increase there by by 2040 of up to 9.8 billion which is absolutely substantial increase just some uh, some of the issues are around mayo and some of the the, the key points around mayo as at the moment we have 11 blue fl flags we've signed up to the all ireland pollinator plan uh we have coastal protection actually we have the probably the largest coast in, in, in the country, we've it's just short about 1,200 kilometers of a coastline. Um, we have significant, uh, the Ballycroy National Park, which is a significant national park here in Mayo. We also have our first, and I think it's first for any local authority, is the Sustainable Agriculture Strategy. We also have the Mayo Dark Skies, and Mayo has a substantial road network of over 6,600 kilometers of road. So it's actually very, very substantial. Uh, in relation to the National Development Plan, so this is this is key in relation to development for the country and for and for our county as well. And you know, referring back to the increase in population globally, but this plan will prepare for a population increase uh, for the country of approximately a, an additional one million between uh, 2060 and 2040, and will help us as well to deal with ongoing challenges such as COVID-19, Brexit. And also at the moment, as in relation to the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, which is certainly becoming more prevalent. Um, as regards our county development plan, uh, a number of key things around this, and you'd be very familiar with these. As regards the spatial and economic strategy, you know, people and places being a vibrant amb amb ambition. Um, also in relation to connected and compact growth. Uh, also, Mayo is a, you know, particularly as it was, a, you know, we like, we promote this county as a place to visit, a place to work, a, a place for people to to come and 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 um, partake of all the great facilities we have here. And it is all about supporting the infrastructure and sustainable growth going forward. Um, this is one of the key areas in relation to our county development plan, and I suppose the huge dependence that we have at the moment in relation to car uh, as regards car car transport and as you can see there as was so dependent in relation to the car um you know for for, for castle bar just under 60 percent ballina 54 percent westport 51 percent 
but at the same time lower than the national average um, in relation to the CSO of 61%. One of the key things as well, if you look at the second line there, I want to point this out is, is how important car passenger uh, travel is. So, you know, sharing cars, and this is an option, I think for Mayo going forward. Uh, Casabar, 18%. Um, the combined average of just over 18%, but if you look at it in relation on, on, on the, 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 the right-hand side, uh, the national CSO has a figure of just under, uh, just over 4%. So that will give you an indication, I suppose, as regards how we can look at this as, a, as, as regards sustainability going forward and, and car pooling and car sharing. Uh, in relation to the others, uh, bus, um, just they're roughly around the same. Walking, though, obviously, is, is a huge importance for us. And here we're above the national average as well. We have 12.87% and the national average is, is, is 9%. Bicycle, you know, disappointing, given the fact that, that we have such importance as regards the greenways, that we're just under uh, 1% on that compared to the national average of 3%. But this is very interesting. So that, and as we develop the county development plan, this is something which is more and more prevalent going forward. Uh, if you look at it, our tier two towns, so for example, in relation to Baton Road, Ballyhonis, Belmullet, Clare Morris, uh, one of the key things there is in relation to, and if you look at the, the top line in relation to in relation to the car and the car driver, you'll see there in the middle, Belmullet, that it is way above uh, every other town as well. Where it's just under 80 percent we figure they are 79.14 percent uh and tier two there is is um the average is just under 51 percent so very dependent in relation to car tra driver going forward um but also you know in relation to the car passenger much as as i said you know very very good to see that those figures are very high as was in relation to just all of them over over um uh, 20 percent and as i said that's in keeping with them um, above the national average as well going forward so sustainability mobility and so as part of our county development plan is that sustainable mobility can be described as linking people and places in a sustainable way by supporting uh, comfortable and affordable journeys and also when you know traveling by cleaner greener transport and a shift away from the private uh, private car to greater usage usage of active travel and public transport and you know my colleague Sarah Sarah Tor will come in as regards to the work that local link are doing here as well in Mayo which is which is which is absolutely fantastic. Um, the idea in relation to our county development plan and the whole aspects of sustainable mobility to support and develop public transport going forward but also to provide a suitable infrastructure uh, and to improve safety and efficiency for public transport user, users and to support that implementation of the Connection Ireland plan, you know, where appropriate. But that's very important from, from our aspects. As, as a county, we work with, in collaboration with, with a number of agencies, such as the National Transport Authority, uh, TII, Transport Infrastructure Ireland, and that, you know, we, we, we seem to be a key stakeholder in delivering the whole area of sustainability going forward. Um, as regards achieving sustainability mobility, it will require a suite of actions and, and a program going forward. And in line with our county development plan, this was a key focus on areas of compact growth, particularly in relation to our large urban areas, such as Ballyhonis, uh, Castlebar and Westport, but also to provide alternative options to the car and improving fuel efficiency. Now, being, being in the West of Ireland, uh, particularly as was, you know, we don't have the uh, the, the advantage or the, the opportunities that, that you would have in the, in the larger cities, such as um, Dublin, Cork and Limerick. So we're very much dependent in relation to private transport and, and private commuting going forward. And we do need that infrastructure. We need that significant growth in order to ensure that, you know, that those options are, are become open to us going forward. Um, in relation to, we work with, with a lot of key stakeholders here, but as well, just to say that the work that we do with with uh, TFI and, and the local link here in Mayo, which is, which is absolutely, I think is a great example of, of collaboration and working in, in, in harmony with, with the service provider in the whole area of transport and sustainability, sustainability going forward. Uh, one of the key things here in Mayo is the whole thing in relation to EV charging. And 
that I suppose we we have a proposal there to you know, uh, and we're working with EasyGo on this and and air charging project as regards to replacing kiosks and phone boxes with an electric charger, and the survey and the potential locations within the county. We you know the approximate that one we've identified with ten locations, and once those locations are agreed and the type of charging, then we proceed to contract. And I think here in Mayo, we, we, we're probably a little bit behind the curve in this. I was talking to Dermot O'Toole yesterday, and there's about 1,300 locations at the moment uh, throughout the country. And at the, you know, Mayo, so far, we just have four. So we have a significant body of work to do in relation to this going forward. But it's very prevalent as well, what, what the EasyGo are saying, and Dermot is saying that a lot of, about 90% of the charging will be done at, done at home by people at, at, at home. Um, the CCMA, the city and county managers, has recently purchased, uh, published, sorry, its electric vehicle guidance document for local authorities. And here in Mayo, we're working very much to the fore as regards electrifying our fleet, our fleet, particularly our small vehicles and small, small vans. So we've recently acquired two electric vehicles, and the plan is to do more uh, of that going forward. And I, from from next year, it will be compulsory in relation to for for local authorities to acquire where possible, I suppose, particularly on the, the, the smaller fleet, electric vehicles as well. And that's something that we're very mindful of. Um, another area I want to talk about is the whole thing in relation to active travel and what is active travel. Um, you know, and you know, that, that you know, that it, it does mean that whole walking, cycling or, or scooting and in discussions at the moment in relation to a pilot for, for, for e-scooter, it's slightly disappointed that the legislation probably isn't going through the Oireachtas as quickly as we'd, we would like. But that is something so that's very, very important to us. And just to say as well that Mayo has been to the fore as regards this whole aspect of uh, community, of sorry, active travel, because um, Westport here in Mayo was one of the designated towns as regards smarter travel along with um, Dungarvan and, and Limerick at the time. So I suppose we've got a good track record, uh, a, a very good history in relation to the whole area of active travel. Uh, as regards government ambition, the programme for government has committed 1.8 billion towards the development of active travel over the next five years. And the National Development Plan, I think, reflects this, uh, this ambition going forward. And it is so important, you know, even though we have a, you know, our climate probably at times isn't suitable. We have significant climate change, but the, the ambition is that we promote active travel and use active travel going forward. And we can see that particularly in relation to Transport Infrastructure Ireland and the, the NTA, where there's much more of a focus now in relation to active travel. So here in Mayo, we've received active travel funding of just over 5 million. And, you know, in line with that, as local authorities, we have requirements under the Disability Act 2005 and the UN Convention of Rights to Persons with Disabilities. And also local authorities are also advised that, you know, that any funding that we get, that it ensure that it's accessible to all. And that's hugely important as well. Just to break down in relation to the areas, so of that five, uh, over 5 million, 883,000 is in Ballina, then Castlebar, over 900,000, the Clamaris Winford area of 1.4 million, and the Westport Bell Mullet area uh, uh, of 1.3 million. We also have in relation to behavioural change, and I can't emphasise that enough. It's not just about the infrastructure, but it's also about the, the behavioural change as well going forward, and in relation to MCC costs as well. So we have our own staff costs in relation to that. This is, um, I suppose, really a high level uh, outline of what the money will be spent on. You have the active travel mobility plans of 246,000. Footpath, footpath packages is, is the majority of that, just over 2.5 million. Also, cycle lanes, 242,000, and walking and cycling facilities of 504. But we are seeing active travel and a program for active travel uh, becoming more and more uh, useful going forward. So I think, that, I think that's important as well. So, um, in relation to the other aspects, um, uh, as well on this, sorry, yeah, let's go back. So rail freight, and I want to mention rail freight if, if I can. Um, and, you know, it's, a, it's an area which is kind of synonymous with Mayo, but the rail freight for 2040 strategy, it plans for a 400% increase in operations and raising traffic to over 100 uh, new flows weekly. And 
you know, the aim around this is, is to reduce the, the carbon footprint, but also it's so important as regards uh, road safety as well. And so the, the more that can be done through rail transport, it does help improve our, our and maintain our road network as well. And, you know, it does make it safer in relation to for commuters. So that, 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 that's important. And it's also important to note that Ireland as a country, we do lag significantly behind all other European countries as well. And there is a lack of supporting policy. So, you know, we are playing catch up. It's important that, that um, rail freight, uh, particularly as was that, that it's seen as it is an alternative going, going forward. And why specifically you're saying this, why, why have I mentioned it in the context of Mayo? Because it, it's fittingly, I suppose, that, that, that the rail freight uh, 2040 strategy was launched in Mayo. Because here, I suppose, in Mayo, we, we are referred to as the nation's rail freight capital. And not a lot of people know that, but rail freight, freight in Ballina uh, is so important. And the, um, uh, the, the, the Minister of State, uh, Hildegard Nocton, was there to launch the strategy as well. So, it's, you know, so it is a key, key part of Mayo and in relation to the, our county development plan as well going forward. Uh, bus stops. This is something which I want to talk to about as well. Is, um, this is something, and I talked about the, the infrastructure and, and us improving the, the infrastructure, but also around the, you know, and around the whole area of the wheelchair accessibility part. Um, and the government policy is to provide at least one wheelchair accessible um, for bus stops in towns with a population of 5,000. And we do have a number of towns in the county at the moment that we are looking at as regards wheelchair accessibility, uh, particularly as regards um, Ballina, Castle Bar, Westport, and we're also looking at this in the context of Clare, of Clare Morris as well. Bus shelters, um, we are currently working with the NTA and particularly in relation to Joe Sullivan and his team in relation to the whole area of, of, of bus shelters in order to coordinate. And it's, it's, it's certainly an area where we, we, we have to do much more work around this piece. Uh, if I show you an example there, so this is along the N5 from Castle Bar to, to Swinford turn off there in relation to straight. But you see there, you know, you have the bus stop, but there isn't a shelter. We do need to provide more shelters here in Mayo. And we do have a programme in place working with our, our local engineers and our local municipal district teams on the ground to provide more and more shelters going forward. And it's certainly something that we're working on here in Mayo to address the situation. So listen, I just want to thank you for listening and thank you for the opportunity. My contact details are there. If you have any queries of that, it's tgillinganmayococo.ie also on Twitter, LinkedIn and Facebook. So thanks so much for, for Engineers Ireland West Committee to, to present to you today. And as I say, thanks for the opportunity. So thanks, John, back to you. Thanks very much for that, Tom. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to progress on to our next speaker, who is Vincent McCarthy. Just to introduce Vincent, uh, Vincent is a transport planner with the National Transport Authority since 2017 and is currently working in the service planning division. This division has a responsibility for the planning of new and amended public service obligation routes across the state, which are primarily operated by bus Aaron and local link. He is part of a team currently implementing the Connecting Ireland initiative which aims to improve mobility in rural areas by providing better connections between villages and towns, thus providing an enhanced regional network connecting cities and regional centres nationwide. Vincent completed an MSc in Sustainable Transport from TU Dublin in 2021 and previously a BA in Public and Social Policy at NUIG. His main public, sec public transport exper experience is for many years of travel, including South Korea, Japan, China, and Route 65, Galway to Monaghan. I'd like to hand over to Vincent. Uh, thank you very much, John. Link Mayo for the opportunity to present to this webinar. The NTA is always keen to ensure a mission statement to provide high quality, accessible, sustainable public transport connecting people across Ireland is heard. On a personal level, I am passionate for rural transport and the contribution people living in or visiting rural Ireland are making to use public transport for multiple trip needs. By the end of my presentation, you will see how policy, funding, and above all, the passenger are changing the face of rural public transport in places like County Mayo. Um, 
I was set an absolutely impossible challenge here this evening, and that was to briefly summarize what we do in the NTA, what is happening in public transport in 2022, and most importantly, what Connecting Ireland is and means for County Mayo in particular. I do hope you have questions or comments, and what I can't answer at the end of the presentation, I will get back to you at a later stage. The NTA is responsible for the planning and or regulation of bus, rail and taxi services across the state. We work with our local authority partners, such as Mayo County Council, to deliver active travel funding for sustainable mobility. We are the agency responsible for the Leap Card Fair Payment Scheme. The NTA also has a role in public policy development. The team which I work in are responsible for the delivery of Connecting Ireland policy, published by the authority in November 2021. This policy will influence the planning of contracted bus services predominantly delivered by Bus Erin and the Rural Transport Programme delivered by Local Link in the years to come. Public transport is a derived need. We need it in order to function as a society and everything we do as an authority is guided by the interest of the passenger. So where exactly is public transport in 2022? Our services have had to change as our society goes through and continues to go through a transformative event. The graph on the left shows the pre-public health restrictions. There were significant year-on-year -year increases in public transport patronage, leading up to the 290 million trips made in 2019. My main worry then, as a transport planner, was whether we could get enough buses on the road to meet rising demand. However, within four months of that, our capacity was restricted to 25% and for essential trips only. However, in 2022, some of our challenges are no different. They are climate change, planning services around people, and attracting users to switch as many private car trips as possible to public transport trips. And if there's one point I would like you to take away from this evening, it is trend one. So that's the fourth bullet point down on the right. The patronage data which we have shows it is local link services carrying more passengers today than they did in 2019 pre-pandemic. It is people living in or visiting rural areas that are showing the rest of us that public transport is meeting their many trip needs. In addition, we are seeing local development plans, including much more specific public transport objectives, and the Mayo County Development Plan is no different. I'm here this evening to discuss Connecting Ireland and what it means for County Mayo in particular. So what's all the fuss about? Well, Connecting Ireland is a five-year program of public transport network improvements outside of the metropolitan areas and large towns. It consists of a range of interurban and local service improvements and expansions, and also aims to provide a line of funding dedicated to development of non-conventional transport measures in areas not suited to fixed route services. And I would like to add that Sarah from Local Link and Mayo is leading the way in the queries that we are getting in about the non-conventional measures to try and address the many and varied needs in County Mayo. The high level objectives of Connecting Ireland are to connect more people to more places via public transport, provide an attractive service as an alternative to the car and provide a better integrated network of services. Local authority development plans, regional, spatial and economic strategies, central government policy such as Project Ireland 2040, provide a much more systematic policy driven approach to public transport. Connecting Ireland is the National Transport Authority's response to these policy demands. Connecting Ireland is not reinventing the wheel. Um, the authority has been implementing Connecting Ireland type changes for some time. So I'd like to give an example from changes made to public transport services on the Dingle Peninsula in 2021. So there's two routes that service the Dingle Peninsula. There's Bus Erin Route 275, so we call that the trunk service, and it connects the urban settlements of Dingle and Tralee, while Local Link 277, so that's the timetable you can see on the screen, connects Dingle Peninsula to Dingle. So working with Local Link and Bus Erin and the National Transport Authority service planning team, we retimed the services on these timetables to ensure people could interchange between Route 275 and 277 in Dingle for onward travel either towards Tralee or towards Dunquin on the peninsula at a minimum of seven times daily. 
The concept of interchange or a network effect of services is advocated by transport professionals such as Paul Meese as a method to ensure areas with lower levels of demand are connected to larger settlements. The principle of interchange between rural and interurban services is embedded in public transport networks such as Switzerland, Belgium, UK, and it forms a key principle of connecting Ireland. So here's the observations from the project that we did. And if you look at the graph on the right, patronage increased from a flat line of less than 30 passengers per week to over 600 per week before coming back down to a base level in the mid hundreds. While the relaxation of public health measures no doubt positively impacted patronage, the increased usage on these two services can also be attributed to the ability to travel from the Dingle Peninsula to Tralee via timed interchange. So I hope that my initial point that people living in or visiting rural areas are showing the rest of us that public transport can meet the many trip needs in rural Ireland. I will now move on and show how Connecting Ireland will be implemented in County Mayo. So in order to identify the Connecting Ireland need for County Mayo, here are some of the things we did. So firstly, we carried out a demand assessment. We consulted with our key stakeholders in the area, Mayo County Council and Mayo Local Link. From Mayo County Council, we were informed of the settlement hierarchy in the county and we mapped it. So it's on the, on the map on the right. For the record, Sligo and Galway City were identified as the regional centres for the area. Four county towns, Balna, Castlebar, Clermaris and Westport were identified. There are 11 local centres, 20 villages and a larger number of smaller settlements. Another thing we did was to identify the current service provision. So this I'm referring to the charts on the left. We consulted with our public transport partners and including Bus Erin, Local Link, and commercial bus operators to determine the existing level of connectivity between the various county towns and settlements in Mayo. So, for example, uh, if you look on the chart on the left, um, I'm going to talk about Cross Malina. So it's about halfway down on the list of local centres in light purple. So the tick implies that there's an existing network connection to another local centre, that being Belmullet, and that there's a connection to a county town, Ballina. We did this for all such settlements in County Mayo in order to map out an existing public transport network. So the existing public transport network we identified is on the left-hand side and the proposed network map of Connecting Ireland enhancements is on the right. So while the existing map and the proposed network map might contain broadly similar route lines, it's important to understand what we identified as lacking in the existing network and what we intend to do about it. The major issue with the existing County Mayo network is that a lot of services are infrequent. In some cases, buses only run on a handful of days per week. So for example, Route 455 between Ballina and Cross Malina operates on Tuesdays only. This infrequency is replicated across the county. Connecting Ireland proposes an absolute minimum of three services per day per direction. Some routes already operate either at or above this level. Our plan for County Mayo is what the proposed network is showing on the right, and that is for increases in public transport services along the existing routes. My next slide will specifically deal with some routes, but the proposed map reflects our so the green lines are regional routes. There will be increased service levels from the four Mayo County towns to the regional centres of Sligo and Galway. The red lines are local routes for enhancement. There will be increased service levels on services operating between the various County Mayo settlements. Now the yellow existing routes were initially identified as not requiring uh, immediate upgrade. However, we were able, we have to be adaptable. And my next slide will show how following consultation with Local Link Mayo, Route 978, which is a yellow line from Belmullet to Castle Bar, was reprioritized for enhancement. So I'll now detail some specific Connecting Ireland proposals, which we are developing with Local Link Mayo, Bus Erin, and Mayo County Council. So if you just bear with me, I'm going to zoom in. So firstly, I just want to talk about North County Mayo. Um, so the route uh, from Blacksod to Belmullet is operated by bus air and route 446, at present roughly around three times daily with a journey time of around 90 minutes. 
The journey time between Black Sod and Belmullet on the Belmullet Peninsula is around 27 minutes. Local Link Mayo operate Route 978 between Belmullet and Castlebar are present two times daily from Monday to Saturday. The current service level in the area is too low and people on the Belmullet Peninsula have no bus service to get to Belmullet for Route 978 services to Castlebar. So going back to the figure that Tom gave of 79% car usage on Belmullet, I mean, this is probably a reasonable indication of why it is so high. So along with Local Link Mayo, we are proposing a dedicated Belmullet feeder service to operate on the peninsula. So that's the purple line that you can see going north to south. This will enable us to further increase Route 446 frequency between Belmullet Town and Ballina. So that journey time should be around 65 minutes and also provide a service to connect with Route 978 to Castlebar, which we are also proposing to increase the frequency level to around three times on a daily basis. So secondly, and let me go down to South County Mayo. Bus Route 450 was recently enhanced to provide six services per direction per day between Dua, on Ackle Island and Lewisburg. In addition, Route 978, um, so that's the service from Belmullet, provides connectivity to Castle Bar via Mulrani. So at present, Route 450 and 978 both operate via Mulrani, but they do not integrate with each other at reasonable times. So this prevents movement between Ackle and Castle Bar, similar to that um, between Tralee, Dingle, and Dingle Dunquin services. In 2021, the National Transport Authority worked with Mayo County Council, Local Link Mayo, and Bus Erin to align the service times between Route 450 and 978 at Mulrani. So, when this is implemented, people will be able to transfer between these routes to travel between Belmullet, Ackle, Westport, and Castlebar. To further improve the connectivity on Ackle Island, we are also considering a feeder type services on the island to improve local trip frequency. So that's similar to the proposal that we have for Belmullet. To conclude, the authority is currently working through Connecting Ireland consultation submissions and incorporating some suggestions into our plans. We are also working with Local Link and Bus Erin to bring the first batch of Connecting Ireland enhancements onto the network this summer. It would be an error of judgment on my part not to acknowledge the dedication of Local Link Mayo in pushing my colleagues to consider other public transport needs, such as community based solutions for rural areas and urban public transport options in some of the larger county Mayo towns. I will conclude my presentation by once again affirming it is rural Ireland which has led the way in post COVID 19 public transport uptake. It is our firm belief County Mayo will be well placed to contribute to sustainable travel patterns in the years to come. So once again, thank you, and I'll answer any questions you have at the end of the presentation, and I'll hand back to you, John. Thank you very much for that, Vincent. Uh, moving along to our third speaker of this evening is Mel Gavin. Just to give a brief background on Mel, Mel is a civil and structural engineer and certified energy manager with over 15 years experience in design and project management on a wide range of public and private projects, including sustainable buildings, wind farms, energy efficiency, product and process design, waste and resource efficiency. He currently manages the contract research unit at Atlantic Technological University, providing outreach, external engagement in research, development and innovation support to regional enterprises, communities and individuals. Mel is an enthusiast for energy transition in the region, working as a member and technical advisor on the SEAI Sustainable Energy Communities Programme and supporting wider momentum toward economic, social and environmental sustainability. I'll hand over to you, Mel. Thanks very much, John. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, I'm also a member of Engineers Ireland, so I'm, I'm very happy to, 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 to work on this this evening. So as John mentioned, um, I am with the Atlantic Technological University uh, until very recently, that was IT Sligo um, and, and a number of other institutions and I've joined. So um, as part of my work, I am a mentor on the Sustainable Energy Communities Program. So I'm, I'm going to run through what that means and what some communities are doing around sustainable transport. So. SEAI, or the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland, they run many uh, grant schemes and support schemes. 
The Sustainable Energy Community or SEC program is, is not a grant scheme. It is specifically about building capacity in communities. Um, the aim of the program is to help communities understand how their, how their energy is used in their community and to identify opportunities and initiatives that they can, uh, that they can take some control of in their community. The program is, is structured in these three stages to first, uh, first learn, then plan, and then do. The mantra, I suppose, the, the mantra for sustainable energy use is to use less uh, to reduce waste, and then for what is left to use as clean a source as possible, and then to innovate or be smart about how we use our energy. And, and a lot of that is simply down to understanding where it is and controlling it at the right time. When you join the network as a community, you're immediately in the, in the learn stage. And there are, a, a lot of the best work is done at the learn stage. Um, you can find local communities uh, in, in your area, in your county, throughout, throughout the country with similar, um, similar aims and objectives. And there's a map on the SAI website where you can identify uh, all of these communities. And also you have a, a continuous mentor in, um, in Mayo, it's uh, Dr. Orla Nixivna. Um, and she's very active with communities around Mayo. There are 650 communities approximately, I think there are just over 650 communities on this network at the moment, and they are all shapes and sizes. But the most common form is a community group who are already active in their community and they have an interest in sustainable energy. Um, so you can see some examples there. In Mayo at the moment, there are 34 SCCs on the network and it's a very active county. Just being at the learn stage doesn't mean that you don't get benefits. You obviously, you have a mentor you can call on um, and that's very often easier than trying to answer on the internet. And there's a lot of learning and communication at the learn stage. And to be honest, some of the, the best benefits to, uh, to the program are at the learn stage in this, uh, in this knowledge sharing. Uh, it's, it's very hard to quantify, but it is definitely there. When you move on to the plan stage, you're getting into a partnership with SEAI, where you carry out an energy master plan for your community. So it's, it's referred to as a partnership because while SEAI would provide technical support from the mentor team, and they will also provide funding to carry out the energy master plan, the community and the SEC team within the community is no doubt contributing to that. So we say to all our communities that this is, this is a considerable project to take on. It's a considerable piece of work. Uh, so don't enter it lightly. It does take a lot of local knowledge, it takes time, and it takes resources locally. The plan itself um, has a number of common elements to it. So each energy master plan for communities will have these elements. First of all, there is a baseline of current energy use, and this is a breakdown of how, how energy is used in the community. Most of our communities are actually quite mindful of transport as well. And in many rural communities, transport is, is quite dominant because of our, our reliance and our dependence on private transport. So the baseline of energy use will break down the types of fuels, the type of energy sources we're using. Usually it will consider different sectors such as residential transport, commercial, public, uh, so in some cases agriculture, uh, and in some cases local industry as well. The plan will also include an assessment of renewable energy resources, and, and this will be everything from the potential for you know, small rooftop solar to large wind farms and large solar farms. And, and in some cases where, where, it's, where there might be that it's suitable um, hydropower as well. The, the other end of the energy master plan then is essentially a roadmap of, of what to do next. So a sustainable energy roadmap. And sometimes it, it, this will include registers of opportunities. These are just terms that really mean a project list or a strategy to move forward over the next three or five or 10 years. And the community team will work with their consultant uh, on how they want that shaped and framed. So after the plan stage, then you're in the do stage. And there's nothing to stop communities jumping into projects if they're ready to do it in any case. You don't need to do the energy master plan. So with regard to SAI grant schemes, as we all know, they change all the time. There is lots of confusion around it. There, are, there is mixed publicity, good and bad. They have different timeframes and different structures and they change. they change from one year to the next. 
the reason they do that, the reason for this continual evolution is, is essentially really to try and make them better, to try and adapt to feedback they're getting from the beneficiaries, try and adapt to feedback they're getting from the supply chain. So it's not done just to frustrate people. It is actually done to try and make things better from, from time to time. But once you're in an SEC, then you have a mentor you can consult for up-to-date information. So looking at some of the work that's been done to date by communities on, on transport specifically, usually they, they will highlight the challenges. And as we all know, and, and as many of the speakers have been talking about, we do have a historical alliance on private cars and vans and private transport, particularly in rural areas with our, our dispersed populations. So that, that is generally a big part of the challenge. The, the data here that you see in the graph is uh, a comparison of County Mayo to the state average from the census 2016 figures. And obviously we can see a, a larger than average reliance on private transport, and that's cars and vans of 75%. But that being said, there are still uh, some, some decent figures there in terms of walking and cycling and, uh, and passengers. This is from 2016, so slightly different to what you, you saw earlier on. So that will have changed since then. Now, the opportunities, um, remote working is, has become very topical in the last couple of years. Um, and we've had a number of communities who identified this before the, the, uh, the COVID pandemic as a potential, but it didn't, uh, it didn't catch on as much at the time. Now people are realizing um, how valuable that might be in terms of reducing care journeys. Raising awareness of public transport options is something that a lot of our SECs uh, work on and, and promoting the benefits of active travel. It's not all about getting rid of cars, but learning how to drive economically um, is, is also a, 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 an initiative that many of our communities work with. And then switching one of the cars to an EV. So not to focus on EVs, there will be a, a part of the solution. But approximately 40% of the homes in, in the County Mayo have two or more cars. That makes it more realistic to consider switching one of those to an electric vehicle. So as I was saying there, EVs are, are an important part of the solution, but they're not the only part. They definitely will be a big part of it, uh, but for many of us, they won't be the only part. Providing information about smart travel choices will be crucial to reducing transport impacts and transport CO2. And we're working with a Mayo Local Link at the moment and trying to frame an energy master plan, which is really aimed at quantifying those smart travel choices. So what does it mean for a person to decide not to drive today to get the, to get the bus to work or to get the bus for, for recreation? What does that mean in terms of CO2 offset? Um, what does that mean in terms of pollution offset? And then also considering your own health benefits in, in making those choices. So really, a lot of communities ask us what is their role in, in, in working with, with transport, particularly tra public transport. And mostly uh, it can be working with the local authorities, working with the public transport providers and helping them understand what the community wants. So the SEC team can be a good pathway to passing that information back and forth. And also in informing your local community on those choices where they exist. So there's, there's lots of different options when it comes to uh, sustainable transport. There are tra active travel options. Obviously there's public transport options. As was mentioned earlier on, there's car sharing. And then there are of course electric vehicles. So these are some examples of work done by communities to date. Uh, Lanfunyev up in County Donegal, they're, they're in Kilult, which is just between Falcara and, uh, and Gidor. And uh, they, as part of their energy master plan, they ran a sustainable transport workshop. So they brought a consultant along to inform the local community and local transport companies about the options of sustainable transport. And a couple of the things that stood out from that workshop were informing people about the local link routes as they are quite extensive, uh, particularly on the west coast um, of Donegal. And many people weren't aware of the fact that they were there or how often they ran. And then in, in relation to eco economic driving, and many people weren't aware that tires actually have energy ratings. So you can see a tire energy label here, um, and it, it includes the energy rating for the rolling resistance. It includes a wet grip rating, and it includes a, 
um, a rolling noise rating. So this was news to a lot of people that, you know, you may pay a little bit more for a, a better energy rated tire, but over the course of the year, that could save you 30 or 40 euros. So it will easily make, it, make itself up in, in terms of cost. In Mohill and County Leitrim, um, they had, when they launched their energy master plan through some, through some community events, they promoted the walking and cycling routes to the local Lochrane Hotel. The Lochrane Hotel is only about three kilometres outside the town. Uh, but a lot of people stay in Mohill and then visit Lochrane for, for dinner or for walks. And then a lot of people in Mohill would, would work there as well. So they identified route options that they, they are going to work with the local authority to try and develop. Um, and they, they highlighted the, the availability of that as an option to, to avoid using the car for those journeys where possible. And then the last one I'll cover at the moment, there are plenty more, is in Mulrani. So I was actually there today. These photos are from today. So Mulrani completed their energy master plan in 2019. And they identified that approximately 40% of their baseline of energy use was in transport. And this is mostly to do with reliance on private cars. So the SEC team there who actually used the tourist office essentially as their hub, as their, as their local headquarters, they, um, they, uh, they got leader funding and they installed a 3.8 kilowatt solar PV system on the tourist office, which obviously runs the tourist office very well because they have electric heating and uh, obviously other electric systems. And they also bought three e-bikes. Now, the e-bikes are actually specifically for the community to use. They're not for the uh, tourists. It's not that they don't want tourists to have them, but there are plenty of tourist-based businesses that hire e-bikes to the tourists. So it's for the community to use. They're on the greenway there. Many people take them to Newport or up to Ackle, um, and they are, they are booked at the tourist office uh, free of charge at the moment. And, uh, and people have been using them extensively, and some people have graduated onto buying their own e-bikes now that they realize the value of these. Again, a lot of these people are car drivers as well. It's not that they give up the car, but they have this choice if they want it. At the uh, tourist center as well, they have installed two external plugs for anybody to use to charge their, their, um, their uh, e-bikes, and they'll be promoting that, obviously, with the tourists that, that visit the town. So that's just a few examples um, of community-based sustainable land, uh, transport initiatives. So I'll hand you back to John again. Great stuff, Bill. Thank you very much for that. Uh, last but by no means least, I'm going to introduce Sarah Toher. Uh, Sarah began her professional career in community and rural development, followed by a career change to HR and project management in the disability sector for over 12 years to her current role, role in rural, rural transport management. As the manager of TFI Local Link Mayo since 2018, Sarah leads the strategic vision of the company in the areas of governance, innovation, and collaboration by working with the Local Link team, the board of directors, and funding partners in the implementation of actions and initiatives. I'd like to hand you over to Sarah now. Thank you. Thanks, John. Okay, so um, I'm going to give some background into the Rural Transport Programme and provide an overview of the company um, and the current services and also um, some information about our strategy that we launched last July for the period from 2021 to 2025. So um, I suppose throughout the, the presentation you'll start to see how the work we're doing on the ground fits into um, the projects that um, Vincent and Mel and, and Tom spoke about. So just um, the, we've been in Mayo, uh, fortunate to have um, the Rural Transport Programme since 2007, and that followed on from the Rural Transport Initiative. And in Mayo, um, in the early days, it was managed by the partnership company Mayo Northeast. And the programme had a very specific focus on responding to rural isolation and um, enhancing mobility and accessibility and community participation, um, primarily for, for those at most risk of being socially excluded. 
and then following a value for money review um, in 2013 that the program was restructured and moved from Pubble um, to the responsibility of the National Transport Authority. And then I suppose to move with the, the change in structure um, here in Mayo, a separate limited company was established, um, Mayo Community Transport, which currently trades as Mayo or Local Link Mayo. Um, so I suppose we've, we've, uh, we've been around a while, even though we're, we're under a, a different um, um, name. So the, the company um, is a not-for-profit company. It's a registered charity and, and trades as a social enterprise. We currently have eight voluntary board members and they represent the community and voluntary sector and the local authority. And their role is primarily governance and um, the, um, ensuring that the, 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 the company is fulfilling its contractual obligations as well as um, uh, the strategic direction of the company. And we have four staff currently employed. Um, working directly on, on the rural transport program. So our current services, we have door-to-door um, um, -door services, they're route-based services uh, known as demand responsive transport. And um, the benefit of those is that they can collect people and drop them off at their own homes. Um, we have one rural regular service since last year um, that Vincent referred to, the 978 who travels between um, Mullet and Casper by Mulrani. Um, and we're hoping to you know extend those services um, in in the years ahead. Um, we also have a community car um, which serves the Lewisburg area um, and that it's an accessible um, vehicle that addresses social inclusion transport needs within that particular area and we're hoping that that's um, something that we can develop in, in further areas in, in the future. And we have particular interest in Mayo Abbey and Calasser um, and also in North Mayo. We also have um, contracts with the HSE to provide transport for um, disability, mental health and um, older people services. And they are closed shared transport and they're all um, passengers come to, to um, the services on referral from the HSC. We also um, have a contract with Mayo University Hospital to deliver um, transport for renal patients attending Mayo University Hospital. Um, we manage a social inclusion Fund from the National Transport Authority, um, and this is one soft grant scheme. It's age, aimed at age-related youth education and uh, cultural activities. And um, this particular program hasn't ran since COVID. However, um, it's expected to, to be reinstated to meet the needs of the Ukrainian refugees um, in the near future. We also provide transport for the residents at the Inishbeagle Island off um, Ballycroy and that includes a feeder service into uh, Belmullet and Ackle and it connects the services into to, to Castlebar and Westport. Um, I suppose in addition we also provide um, transport on request um, for community groups um, throughout the year. Just in our services, we would have over 120 rural transport services weekly. Um, on average, um, 1,200 weekly passengers. We have um, 110 registered vehicles, um, 120 professional drivers, and all of the drivers are guard vetted. They have, um, you know, professionally trained, and they have additional training in the area like Children's First, Health and Safety, and, um, you know, Disability Awareness and Wheelchair Clamping and so on. Um, at the moment, we have 80% of our, our vehicles are wheelchair accessible. I suppose it's important to, to note that we don't own our own fleet. All of our um, vehicles are contracted through, through private bus operators and they're sourced through 
for the procurement three tenders. Um, this map just demonstrates the, the range of our local link services throughout Mayo. So there's 49 DRT services and, and one rural regular service. And this is um, represents our HSE closed services. Um, we have 35 of those at, the, at present, six of them are suspended. They're um, services for older people that haven't recommenced since, since the pandemic. We have um, 37 renal transport services throughout the county, so that also gives you an idea of the, the spread of those services. So in terms of um, the, the numbers, um, I suppose, similar to, to what Vincent had um, presented, our, our numbers were increasing steadily up until um, uh, 2019, um, where we had got to 147,000 passengers. Uh, and then during the pandemic, they, you know, because we had the, the uh, restrictions of 25%, 50%, 70%, our, our numbers um, were much lower. But I suppose we in Mayo worked with the Mayo County Council through the community forum um, as part of the, the community response and were in a position to uh, redeploy services to uh, provide a collect and delivery service. So during that time, we delivered over 36,000 um, deliveries, whether it was medical supplies, um, it could have been meals on wheels or groceries or whatever was needed. So just in terms of our budget, our budget is just under 2 million. Um, and that's divided between the National Transport Authority, the HSC, Mayo University Hospital, and uh, the Department of Community and Rural Development who fund the island service. Um, so you'll see from that that 85% of those costs are directly um, operator transport costs and 15% uh, of our costs relate to um, administration and salaries. Just in terms of um, the strategy, I mentioned that we launched last July. This was the first strategy for the company and the purpose of the strategy was conduct a, a review of the organization and to develop a workable plan and um, and something that was achievable so combined a uh, study of uh, desk research but also uh, an extensive community consultation and an internal review process um, and the whole um i suppose vision that was set out by the company was to develop a community where access to transport is available to enhance the quality of life for all who live, work and visit and socialise in the county. And the target really was to look at all the things that the, the speakers before me have, have referred to around improving the quality of vehicles, you know, cleaner, greener transport, around comfortable and affordable journeys, you know, linking people to, to education, employment, to leisure. Um, and then, you know, also, <laughs> promoting services, you know, as well as our local link services, but all the connectivity within public transport to try to, to encourage a shift from on car dependency. So the, the county, I suppose, gives us a lot of challenges because of its size. So it's the third largest county and people in the county have long distances to travel. And I suppose the development of um, high frequency services is key to being able to encourage people to, to move from the, the, their cars to public transport options. So the physical size and the features of the county do give rise to, to, to transport and access, access difficulties. And then we have a lot of very sparsely populated rural communities and um, an aging population. And then in terms of um, I suppose other issues is that, you know, funding um, that we don't have 
you know, ongoing funding. We're in kind of fixed term contract arrangements with, with all of, of, of the funders. So that makes it very difficult to be strategic and take a long term um, approach to developing services. So the strategy itself, we um, it outlines over 30 actions. Um, and it's, I suppose they all come in under five strategic aims. We have governance, aggression, collaboration, communication, and innovation. And like, for example, in the area of progression, you know, that would be the work that we're doing um, with the National Transport Authority and the Connecting Ireland team um, around addressing um, the deficits and, you know, towards increasing frequency of service and the range of services and, you know, the uh, community care provision and so on. And then in terms of collaboration, um, we're looking at the work we're doing with the stakeholders in tourism, education and business and around looking at how we can address the needs of people who, who need to, to get to work or get to education and use in public transport. And then in terms of innovation, we've outlined a number of actions um, and I suppose the, the work we're doing with the sustainable energy community would be one of those um, innovative um, actions. And while we're still in that learning period, we have greatly benefited from the support from, from Mel Gavin and Dr. Horland Xivna from SEAI. Um, and it's just around getting us to think differently and I suppose to think with that sustainable mobility um, vision that, that will help us to um, be more um, I suppose, focused on, on the, the, the wider agenda. And um, we're also working with the National Transport Authority around the rollout of a driver app, and that will improve logistics and our operational efficiency. Um, and we also have, I suppose, a number of um, technical or technology innovation that, that is supported by the National Transport Authority, for example, like in the last um, two years, they've introduced new mapping tools and uh, resources that um, help us to, to improve the, the quality of, of, of the services that we're providing. So just in terms of our key partners in our state, um, I suppose the key partners are extremely important to the organisation um, for the ongoing delivery of the services. And we're because we're such a small organization, we're very dependent on all the, the supports and collaboration um, that, that we benefit from. And, and it's through those partners that we're able to achieve the outcomes. And I suppose we couldn't do it without that support and commitment. So um, with that, I'm going to hand you over to John and John's going to um, present a video which represents our door-to-door -door services here in Mayo um, and it gives a, a good kind of insight into the work we do and I suppose why the work we do is so important. Thanks John. Thanks Sarah. raised and grew up in the country myself you know in a very rural area like and realized uh, from from all the time like how difficult it was to for travel and to get out of rural areas you know and um, then when when we started at the at the, the buses like what we were going to do was try uh, w and provide a service in our local area that would keep us in our local area and give something back Local Link is uh, it's their meeting point. They, they get on so well on the bus that they have the fun and the crack going up the road. And when you get to Westport, what do you do there? Straight to the pub. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh you're <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
when we, ha yeah, when we have some shopping to do and we have our dinner. It takes me out. I don't drive anymore. I haven't driven for a year. And it takes me out and mix among people. And I don't walk very well, so <laughs> I don't have a lot of contact. It's great for the rural areas and especially it's great for Inishpiggle and islands like Inishpiggle because we'd be isolated without it. Once it once you know it's there and you're out, you know, you can get wherever you want. Gets me out of the house. Too many people. That's their social outing. Maybe the bus as much as the bit of shopping. Some of them wouldn't do that much shopping, but they would have the social chat and, you know, they'd, they'd talk to one another and they'd have all the. It would be their day out. I love to get out of the house and meet all my friends my own age, have our little chat. <laughs> I enjoy that. And it's lovely. It keeps you going again for the next Friday. <laughs> Sitting out, looking out the window and see nobody, you know, I find the day awful long. I don't know how I pass it. Well, I get the bus down to Newport Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. We, we play bingo and we do have dancing and do have knitting. So what we have to do is, you know, study them closely and make sure that without being intrusive or interfering with their system, that we can help them to continue with what they were doing when they were much better able. Well, if, if they didn't have the buses going around with, with the local link, they could be forgotten about. They'd, they wouldn't be able to get to town. The, the, they would be lost. Big bus companies, they wouldn't have the time to spend with, with their customers, whereas we we are on a time schedule, but not a strict time schedule. We, we can spend time talking to them, make sure they're OK. And that's, I feel, what you know, makes us that little bit different, that we can give them that time. We're not rushed. There's no one in, in a hurry. We're not beeping the horn outside any house. Or, you know, it wouldn't work that way. Like Our routes take a little bit longer than if we were doing mainline, because we have to spend that little bit of time extra. We try to go in and go where it's to provide a, a service for people that wouldn't be able to access mainline services, you know. The best thing about it, uh, the drivers, they uh, take your shop, put your shopping in, they take your shopping off, um, leave it in the house for you if necessary, so um, that's, that's a great help when you're older. He, he does everything I know he needn't do, and uh, He's very good. We would pick them up at the door and drop them off at the door. For They're a lot safer. They're not going to fall outside. My phone is, is on 24-7, and, and everybody that's on the bus knows that if, in any area, if they wanted something like, or if they had a problem like, I will answer the phone to them and do something like. I love it. So we should be the first off, but... Uh... Mary and I, we, we, we always wait. Uh, wait on the bus. To the two last, for the two last ones off, yeah. Well, for the sharp one, it's once a week. But then if you want to go near the home, give them a call and they're there. It's just great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the video from Local Link. Uh, I think it's, I think it's, I think it epitomizes, uh, you know, the enhancements that are made uh, in our society through Local Link and 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 the different services that are provided. Um,